Fair enough. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and good evening, and I uh, hope you're well, and welcome to The Late One with myself, Silver and Sidiel. And I'm joined today with Dr. David Burton. Um, we're going to do a two-part today. The first bit where we're going to touch on uh, COVID-19. Yes, yes, he's still there. He's hanging around. Many people think he's gone. I think he's hurting in the corner. Ready to go. Or maybe he just actually ran away or something like that. But yeah, we're going to do a little COVID-19 review. And then about half an hour time, we just um, go on to Sir George Floyd. I call him Sir George Floyd. Um, and look, so, sort of review of that. And also look at to see how the impact of the demonstration and as well as got to do with even COVID-19 as well. David, welcome again, sir. Welcome, Ronnie. Thanks. Thanks. Um, I'm good. Um, you know, we're still still fighting that good fight. Yes. Um, and uh, still progressing with our daily challenges. Yes. So I hope, I hope people are still continuing that. Um, but let's let's get to the, the, the crux of the matter. Um, COVID. I, I, I mean, I mean, I mean it, before we even start, yeah, I mean, sure. um, uh, COVID-19 seemed to be on the back burner to a certain extent. To, a, to, a, to an extent, yeah. I mean... Um, it's a front burner for some people because obviously the second part of the um, sort of discussion today isn't poignant, isn't isn't something that um, registers with some some folks. So you know, COVID nineteen is still is still the story. Um, yes. It's still affecting all of us, um, yeah. and so um, most definitely, I think that um, we shouldn't take our eyes off the prize with regards to the effects of COVID. But uh, obviously, there are there are other events that have taken place, which we'll talk mm -hmm. about later on. Mm. And in regards to sort of COVID, um, the, the the really disheartening news today was obviously that we went over that sort of forty thousand um, um, mark, mark. Of, of, of of death. Um, yeah. I remember very early on um, that we um, were told um, from government officials working on behalf of the government that to to restrain and get the numbers under twenty thousand would be a, a, a good feat. So mm -hmm. to double that now, I think, um, has really put this into perspective uh, for all of us. Um, and uh, in as far as that, as far as news from today, um, we heard from Matt Hancock without any of the um, sage it's representatives, good. which is which is a very interesting thing, um, and I guess things that we could speculate on why they weren't present. But the broad facts were that. Uh, PPE was the, the the topic of discussion mostly today. Yeah. Um, the fact that on the fifteenth of this month, there's an expectation that healthcare professionals um, in all hospital environments are going to be required to wear a face mask, um, a face covering, um, and the face mask is 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 essentially one of the things I've been uh, ruminating on for quite a while in our discussions um, because yeah. I, I I feel that this is something that um, has is is really key to trying to stop the the the, the spread of the virus, um, yes. and I also speculated a few weeks ago that it would be something that would be required in public. And you know, in the latter few days, we've heard that it's going to be an expectation that on public transportation, that um, face coverings are required. required. Yes. Yeah, our requ face requirements are, are recovered are, recu uh, are required. So, I think that's the big part of the news obviously at the moment i don't want people to think that, that face masks are not used at the moment in terms of um, our work as clinicians and and healthcare professionals we wear masks in environments uh, where we are encountering our patients in any case um whenever i've conducted sort of consultations a face mask is worn and um i think on the whole patients have taken some form of face covering to be worn um, but now the recommendation is that it's a it's, a, it's an actual face mask and, and also, as you mentioned about face masks, um, there, there's another bit also regarding dentistry. Um, they, they believe that they're not ready and, and they're getting under pressure now. People are saying, hey, we want to um, get our, our, our teeth sorted out. But, mm -hmm. from, from, but they're actually saying, is it because, I mean, you're, you're an ophthalmologist, so therefore you do a lot with the, the eyes. What is sorry? Yeah, yes. that's correct. That's great. So I'm, I'm, I'm above, contact with your face, I'm above the nose and below the forehead. So that's that's where I, where I, where I register my work. But in yeah. terms of dentistry, yeah, in, in all seriousness, they um, are operating in an area or working, not operating. They may well be operating, but they're working in an area which is predominantly the area upon which we would be spreading uh, uh, contaminant. When I say we, I'm talking mm. about the general population. Mm. So um, there is a worry from their point of view that they need the adequate protection. Um, in yes. order to carry out the job that they do, 
um, for the benefit of the patients that they serve. So um, they, they're, 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 their movement is such that they want to have that adequate protection and they, they, they feel that they're not adequately protected um, at, at present. And the provisions for that um, in terms of also setting up with the clinics and the, and the workspace, uh, work space and the flow of the clinics that they operate um, will all need to be revised in due course. Um, and that's and that again just boils down to how much of this PPE we have, Silver. Yeah. It's it's really how much are we um, procuring? How much can we manufacture if if we are manufacturing uh, yeah. on the on home soil? And it boils down to what I was saying before that that, that that really does need to be a need for the production on home soil in order to solve this problem because it's a worldwide issue, a worldwide yes. issue that everybody needs this 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 product. Everybody needs it, and there's not a nation on the world that is not trying to. Uh, either either be prepared for now or actually procure more for preparedness in the future. So um, that's the struggle that we all have. But but isn't it interesting as well at the same time? Because I heard on the news today that a lot of people have donated uh, PPEs. I wonder they are saying that some of them might not be up to scratch or so. I mean, I personally received around 20 PPEs from a colleague, a neighbor, who found them in her, her, her garage and she washed them off and everything and i'm still trying to get it to go to the hospital i know the dentist the den that, not the dentist the, the ambulance service did call me and and i think they were supposed to come back yesterday i think to organize mm -hmm. to pick it up but of course they could be sending the ambulance around and then something take them off course of course <laughs> of course priority. but it, it is one looking like a goggles that cover your face and i believe i've seen that more in the dentist actually come to think mm -hmm. about it now I've seen that, so maybe I should give so it to my dentist. It's, so it's, it's part of it's part of a kit, isn't it? So they'll there'll be a requirement for covering of the face. So the masks that we talk about, there's the gloves, there's the aprons, there's the face, yes. um, face shields, and also if not wearing shields, then there's the the goggles as well. So there's 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 models of of PP that's required for different stages of procedures that we do, um, and some procedures are much more risky than than others. Um, and again, all po all forms of this PPE needs to be re um, emphasised, particularly in healthcare environments, because if you lack one part, it means that you mm. are unable to do the job effectively. So you might have all of the eye shields and the face protection that's there, and maybe a mask that's required for that particular procedure. But if you don't have the apron and the gloves adequately, you can't do the job. Yeah, and that's Let the problem. Think yeah ladies and gentlemen welcome again for those who are joining on uh, uh, instagram and facebook i'm with dr david burton ophthalmologist uh, mr burton and uh david has been regular where we have been going through the whole pace of covid 19 since it's since it's onslaught upon the world and uh, uh but due to um the, the late george floyd issue we have been talking more on that but then i realized i realized today so so yes so so thank you for coming on and and please share this video as well please share it and we'll watch party or whatever like that sharing is caring and of course <laughs> you can go to the youtube channel silver and tv as well which will be on later um in 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 half an hour or so we'll be going on to talk about george floyd and looking at the implications of that because we don't just cover covid covid is not the is not the only thing that we talk about these days even though it seems to be but you know we're moving on from that at the same time. The I, I noticed today with Matt Hancock, and I get I got the impression, David. I don't know if people got this impression as well. He sounded a bit very serious. It's like saying emphasize the social distance, you know, because I believe Alok Sharma, one of the ministers, is actually isolating, if I'm not mistaken. And I believe the prime minister might be isolated. Uh, I think he's 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 um he's showing symptoms, so he's isolated. And I believe the prime minister and, and another person will be isolating again because they're all in communication. But I sense with him today, like let's not get relaxed on our laurels. And hence the reason why I, I did tape a little video of him saying, even for the demonstrators and the demonstration, and this weekend seemed to be a gonna be a great weekend. He said, emphasize this social distance go with six persons if anything have six persons do not do crowds and he implored the demonstrators do not this weekend it's like this weekend is going to be hot and, and i sense a level of seriousness at the same time vis-a-vis -vis the whole demonstration which is happening but he didn't come across like you're going to be penalized blah blah he was very sensitive and he emphasized that he he, he empathized with the the, the family of george floyd yeah. but he's imploring us imploring i sense a level of imploring 
do not only go for six yeah i think i think that this is um i mean obviously we'll we'll, we'll touch on george floyd um uh, shortly but yeah. In, in, in the, the timing of um, of all of this has obviously thrown things into a, a little bit of jeopardy here, and um, the ethical dilemma that's faced by wanting to go and protest versus staying at home is is a challenging one um, in in current circumstance. But I think the fact remains that that the two meter rule is something that we've been asked to obey. Um, yeah. And respecting the space of other individuals and not meeting up in groups is 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 the rule at present. Now, I would hope that, and I thought we all would hope that 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 changes in due course. But at, at the moment, with the position that we are in, with the number of cases that um, are, are coming into hospital, etc., the number of people who are being admitted, and unfortunately, those people who are passing away. The, the the advice is 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 that we um, stay alert and that we um, obey the two meter rule mm. um and i i agree i i felt that sort of seriousness as well because it's a it's a very um tight line to walk um yeah. in terms of, of of how um we as a as a public um feel about sensitive issues and I'm not not, dim, I'm not belittling, because obviously you'll hear I'm not I'm not belittling the issue of of George Floyd's death, yes, but at yes. the same, same time it is a very sensitive time for 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 us all world, worldwide. Yes. But at the same time we've got to balance that against the risk of um, of creating more spikes, yes. um, more people being affected um, with respect to COVID. So I think that that advice needs to be followed. But what do you, what do you sense? A, a lot of people are actually saying, um, it, it, I say it jokingly, but they say, where is this COVID? What's happening? And it's, they, they start getting into the old conspiracy and they say, ah, the best way to deal with COVID is to have a demonstration. You know, it's a change of game. And they, they, people are really belittling the whole thing. And, and I've, I've, personally, I've taken it very serious because I have responsibilities for my wife and children. You know what I'm saying? I have mm -hmm. a responsibility as much as self. So I, the, 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 one of the advice is that if you can work from home, work from home. If you exactly. can't work from home, then you go to work and and the the, the whole social distance and the whole um, proper way being alert, being alert, being alert. Essentially, being alert to the situation, being alert to the fact that you are in and amongst people. We yes. we want as best we can to to sort of communicate mm -hmm. in the manner that we would have previously, hugging, yeah. kissing, shaking hands that sort of thing, but we can't, unfortunately, do that at present, um, given the advice from the government and, yeah. um, and, and and the health advisors. So with that in mind, I think that, um, you know, protection and staying alert um, and being is, is key to sort of moving forward. Um, yeah. And, you know, I hope that with, with, with that in mind, that we reduce those numbers so we can get to a position mm. where we get to some sense of normality sooner rather than later. Because when I look at when I look at the figures, uh, like the top ten countries by coronavirus death, uh, US is one hundred and eight thousand, UK forty thousand, Brazil, Brazil is now the interesting thing about Brazil. Brazil is a hot country, isn't it, David? Mm -hmm. It is. It is, yeah. and th that's a, that is that is a very interesting way of looking at the, the data as well, mm. because you can look at the numbers of death, but the the thing to 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 realise here is that obviously every country has a different population. Yes, and there are many different ways to look at stats, and um, what 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 we can look at is the number of deaths per hundred thousand of population. Yes, and when you look at that, um, unfortunately, the UK is way up there with Italy and with Spain. It's, um, it is of 60, around UK sixty. Is, yeah, exactly yeah. sixty. I think off the top of my hat, and I don't want to get quizzed on it, but I think it was a sort of fifty-four, fifty-six for Italy and Spain. Yeah. So yes. they're there and thereabouts, um, and that's that's the reality of the matter with regards to the, the figures and 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 way down way way down is germany and i get the, Ten, yes yes it, it's, it's very difficult to compare country to country mm. um, because always, our populations are yeah, yeah. Uh, our populations are different um the the, the the cultures are different um the way that we all interact is slightly different yeah. um the, the sparseness of some parts of, of of a country is different to others um and and so it, it does make it different to compare compare but i think at the same time we have to appreciate that we are in a position that is 
um, not as great as other mm. countries. Um, mm. And, yeah. and we, we're, we're picking apart those reasons. Um, yeah. And so why that's the reason we should take it you know, very seriously. Yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, do do chip in as well. Let me get your views as well as as to the whole thing. Because I, I want to reason, David, why I mentioned Brazil and I'm looking at uh, Mexico. Well, Mexico is thirteen thousand, but these are hot countries, mm. and uh, I've seen where they have now dismissed this whole thing about heat and hot because many people are saying in hot countries it kills off the virus. Right, right. But well, that to be that, that's that's the thing. It doesn't appear to be the case. Yes. Um, I'm within reason. I'm not one to just dismiss um, certain um, ideas regarding uh, sort of the progression of a, of a condition um, yes. without without basis, um, without hearing the facts. And yes. I think very early on, it was quite tricky to understand why it would be that this is something that is less prevalent in hot climates. I think yes. the, the the greater indicator as to how prevalent the condition is is really how quickly you get on top of of, of isolating those who have the condition itself um, and unfortunately our process of doing that um, I think could have been improved um, and and it's partly um, one of the reasons as to why we are where we are so the heat thing no I, I don't think there's anything that 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 that, that, um, that uh, is is really been proven or proven to, to to sort of give rise to any kind of reduction in number of cases. Um, and the, the other thing early on was the idea that hydroxychloroquine was something that would be of great benefit. What That's I would say is there still are, talking um, about. there are, yeah, there, 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 a study has, has recently stopped in that regard. Um, mm. There will, I'm sure, undoubtedly be other um, studies um, that will be trying to look into this, but the safety of the drug itself um, uh, is 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 tragically not as great as we would have liked it to have been. Um, mm. And obviously, there have been um, scatterings of, of of people who have tried to take the medication um, in in other forms and un unfortunately suffered um, the, the either through death or, or, or side effects yeah. or complications. So yeah. um, those are the things that have developed over the past few weeks. Um, there are other drug trials. There's a really big drug trial that's happening at the moment. And I have to give a shout out to um, Bradford um, Teaching Hospitals because they're part of this trial, which is looking at um, many different treatment strategies to um, um, help um, patients who are currently suffering with, with, with COVID symptoms to try mm -hmm. and reduce the impact of that on them and, and, and hopefully help as a treatment strategy. So that's currently undergoing. Um, yeah. We should get some information shortly um, and I'm hopeful that will be positive for, for the patients that we, we serve. Now, one other final bit that I want to touch on now because all the recent questions that have been put to the number 10 Downing Street, whosoever is the lead person, this keeps coming up back now, the BME, the BME, and the recent report as well. And um, and there's still, everybody's edging around that area, even the signs are edging around that area to the point that Matt Hancock actually is now, he was alluding to the fact that, well, if that's the case, then we need to look at how the BME are positioned. If they're saying because they work on the front line, because they are in housing, which are not so big, so they, they have to be clustered, he started to look at it in that way now. What, what's your thoughts on that now, David, um, with the recent discussions? About yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. So um, I've been part of sort of discussion forums in regards to this particular subject. Um, it's obviously um, impacting um, persons from the Black and Asian communities. And what I will say today is that I was very impressed by the last question that was raised today in, 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 in the questions, because it, it, it really, um, it, it, it felt like a, a, that it was, it was Prime Minister's questions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because yeah. the way that, that he was on the um, back foot to try and uh, answer the question, this is Matt Hancock. Yes, um, yes. And, and actually we got some uh, information that we, we wanted, which is we want there to be recommendations based on the, um, results um, of the most recent investigation mm. into the effect, disproportionate effect 
on black and minority ethnic groups. Um, because without recommendations, this is just um, a, a report, okay? Yeah. Um, what what any um, good dossier will, will provide is a recommended route to try and establish how we improve the outcomes. And it's as simple as that. Yeah. And I think that's all people across the board, whether um, you are black and minority ethnic or you are in a um, disproportionate group, i.e. the over 65 stroke 70s, or you are obese or you will have diabetes, these groups need some kind of action plans um, in order to um, to try and solve the the, 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 the the disproportionate effects from this particular condition. Because it's not only COVID, remember, that uh, this is going to be beneficial for but i think in terms of overall quality of health yes. it's going to have a big impact so to solve those health inequalities is not something to be taken lightly it's yeah. something that's going to be very challenging um but we need to have some recommendations so we can start those patterns of how we we we, we fight those transitions, uh, transitions. David, do, you, do you believe that the bme community the black community is taking this very serious. Uh, I saw a party uh, a couple of days ago that showing halves then where everybody's having a party. So the demonstration, demonstration which happened. Let's talk for the UK. I can't speak for the States. Uh, you, you think people are actually taking this serious? You know, David? That's a very good question to ask, Silbon. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't have the answer and I can't speak on behalf of the, the, the black community just because of the fact that it, it, it speaks to each individual um, and yeah. you have to speak to your own truth. But mm. I think in, in terms of um, the effects of COVID, there's a there's going to be a proportion of society, whether white or black or, yes. um, or woman or man or, or, or young or old, who is really going to take the condition seriously and, yes. and others that, that, that don't. And, you know, the marker of that is early on in um, this um this, tra this tragic sort of um, um, position where we found that we were going to go into lockdowns. Mm -hmm. um, there were people uh, who you, I'm sure, not personally aware of, but people who were, you would have heard in the press that were holding parties and, and yeah. not really taking it quite seriously, et cetera, et cetera. I would hope that, um, that persons would take this more seriously and, mm -hmm. and have taken it seriously enough to be on lockdown. And yeah. um, there are going to be pockets of people who who decide that you know for them this isn't anything um, that that will affect them. And yeah. to those persons, I would say actually that's not the position and um, to, to 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 really take. But um, the broader point is I don't I don't know that the black community as a whole are not taking it seriously. I think I think that that there there are definitely within the circles I'm in we 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 take this most definitely seriously. Mm -hmm. Serious enough to we want more um, in terms of uh, uh, advisory from and directive from the government at least yes. to 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 help those vulnerable people within communities to to sort of um, fight back against this particular COVID crisis, but also in the broader sense. Again, I touch on the fact that from a from a disproportionate a number of people who are affected with health conditions, this is really going to be beneficial. I think in the long run. So in a sense, so so the positive though is that the deaths are coming down. The figures are coming down though. The figures are coming down. Are they coming down in in a manner that we would expect? Well, the seven day rolling figures are reducing. I personally like them to be falling a lot quicker than they currently are, um, and that's obvious. Everybody wants that to occur. Um, I think we have to watch this space. I think that um, regional variations are obviously going to be uh, apparent. Um, London has done very well, I will say comparative to where it was six mm. to eight weeks ago other parts of the country are are probably slowing down in terms of um, their recovery um comparatively to, to to london they had smaller cases but at the same time the rate of recovery is probably not as great as we would like it to 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 be um but the numbers are coming down and i think that's the positive but um i also think that that we have to be sensible we have to be a, a alert i don't want to sound like a uh, a spokesperson for uh, for for government, but at the same time, there is a sensible approach to the way that we conduct our activities, and um, I'm 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 pleasantly 
they're happy that the, the face coverings is something that has been mandated, uh, particularly on public transport. I think um, most people are sensible, but I think that um, to mandate it is is to 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 say, look, this is a is a requirement now, and it's for the benefit of everybody to to uh, it current climate uh, to 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 wear a face protection face covering. One of one of the things I was listening to like shopping centers and shopping complexes, they're actually saying that persons will now have to book appointments to go to, if they're going to that store, that store, and they've got an allocated spot. And they're, I mean, they're saying it's all crazy. But do you believe really it should be extended more? Um, that is a face mask. Yeah, I, well, it's it's a, it's a because it, there's a, now, uh, and this is where the messaging comes in, um, and yeah. the clarity in regards to what, what where the face masks are worn, um, there's communication as to whether they'll be worn in particular environments and shops, um, mm. and how shops maneuver their their workload. I.e., um, there were some suggestions um, that that bookstores might have to quarantine books for not quarantine, but remove books off the shelves for a while if they've been touched, etc. Um, which which is yeah. really you know really a, a, a tricky one because that's not occurring in say um, your local supermarket um, where people may well take a, a fruit or or, yep. or, or or otherwise. So um, I think there's got to be a degree of, of people being sensible. Um, hand washing is key. Um, mm. Making sure you're obeying this two meter rule. Um, and, and, and wearing your face. There you go. Yep. <laughs> take it everywhere you go. Fantastic <laughs> advert. You know, yeah. and I, I didn't even promise you for that advert, but that's that, that's 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 the that's the that's the sensible approach to this. Yeah. Until we are in a, a a better space from a from an education point of view, from a from a reduction in the R value point of view, until we're happier that that this virus is 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 gone, eradicated, and we we're happy and safe to operate. I think we yeah. just have to be sensible. Um, yes, and that's that's just a matter of fact. And and what what I'm seeing what I'm seeing now. Um, as well, I must say I'm grateful. I, I believe I've got the deputy speaker of the house on here, Nigel Evans. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. Um, the the what 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 I what I what I saw also is that there's there's they're coming around to this period now where they're going to start to be looking at. Uh, I saw a news item which I'm just going to try to find quickly. Questions now as to if the policy of the government caused a high UK death toll. I don't want to go into that now, but this is where this is now going now. I can sense this is where it's going with the, the, the blame factor now. And it, and it's, it's it's a tricky area because, as you said, even with the figures, how can you actually be with those figures and make that massive comparison with the UK, the USA, Brazil, Italy, Germany, Iran, you know? Yeah. It's, so, it's, it's, so I think that's, you know, there's, there's a different patterns to the way that we go through any particular um event um and we're soon approaching that sort of reflection um yes. portion of 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 all of this and and that's because we're over the 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 hump we're flattening down and, and recovering um quite well um, mm -hmm. we're trying to get those um treatments those effective treatments there's still the whispering, and I'll say it, the quiet whispering of, of vaccination that's still there. But it's a very distant, quiet whispering. Mm. And so, yeah, we're going to reflect on on how we, how did we get to where we are right now? Um, how are we going to um, sort of put in place um, strategies to reduce the chance of uh, the effect of this occurring uh, in in the way that it has again? Because there's no doubt in my mind. Mm. You know, viruses have been here whilst man has been here. So yes. we are, we're, you know, this is not anything that's fresh and new. What is new is the way that um, this has affected us in our current lifetimes, mm. because most of us haven't been around for the for the, uh, the Spanish flu. So in this in this respect, it's new, um, and the way that we all communicate with one one another has changed over the over over the tens of years. We are much more of a global entity than we were a hundred years ago. So how so, do we yeah. challenge that? How do we uh, not challenge it, but how do we cope with that when the next thing hits? And I'm not trying to put a distant memory to COVID because we're still in this particular um, crisis. But um, I think that by reflecting on how our 
um, how we managed this in the early days, how mm. we approached it, the idea of um, accepting it for a few days and having a kind of a herd immunity idea or concept um, is is to be is to be challenged, is to be thought of as 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 a, as a question as to why um, and, and did it make sense at that point in time? Yeah. We need the answers to those questions as well, but. Um, my feeling is we need the, the, the pressing answers to the, the disproportionate effect on communities, the disproportionate effect on particularly um, those vulnerable pe uh, persons who are uh, over sort of 65, 70. And again, on the black community and the Asian community um, and, the, and, and the ethnic communities um, in terms of um, the effect of COVID. Yes. All right. Well, David, listen, we're, we're going to um, move on now um, to uh, the other bit. But any last word that you want to say to persons um, and in light of even this weekend as to what Matt Hancock was saying? To, sure. So I'll, I'll change the narrative slightly. I'm not saying to ignore the government because I would never say that. Please yeah. stick to government advice. Um, but what I'll say is the next additive would be to, just to be sensible. Um, yeah to to use the common sense and i think that is a simple message to get through if if you're if you are adopting that as a as a way of carrying on then i think that's 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 key in advice but yeah keep keep staying alert keep respecting the two meter rule and face masks when out in, 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 in the public well ladies and gentlemen one thank you so much for this part of the show where we were discussing um covid19 and uh david dr burton um, highlighting some of the new things because uh, uh, the, 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 it is interesting, David, because we were complaining at one time that we weren't hearing much because the Dominic Cummings was completely overshadowed by the press. And therefore, for a period of time, we, we weren't getting any proper news. We had to be dissecting it because everything was Dominic Cummings. Now, we're not, we're not supporting Dominic Cummings or against Dominic Cummings, whatever, but it's just that we were focused on trying to get the news and we felt that it has been overshadowed and there's a distraction along the way. Now, we don't have a distraction now, but but George Floyd bit has somewhat slightly overshadowed, but we're still navigating a bit. And the reason why I said, let's do a two part today and look at the whole implications of, of George Floyd because we have been communicating a lot on that. Right, well, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, um, you know, thank you again for coming on with Dr. Burton, but we are social commentators as well. <laughs> we're not just in <laughs> law and, and, and the medical field and, and um, talking about COVID, but we're also social commenters that speak on different issues. We also have a 21 day challenge, if you haven't heard, we might say it again, whereby we understand what <laughs> challenge to change habits, you know. I've it's not too late, to, it's not too late to start either. It's not it's too late. Go, yeah, every and time I, is a good time. Any time, and, and that's a key point about this challenge. This challenge is not about the 21 day from the time when we start and you try to cram it in for that five days or so, it is from now. And what it is about is doing something that you have not done before, doing something which is positive, that is maybe um, stop eating sugar, maybe it's like taking a walk, like I've been doing in the morning, taking a walk every morning, every morning at seven o'clock, even though I miss it, but I make sure I'm out there. David is doing his running and okay. showing off to say that I need to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get slimmer in the face, Silbon, that's all. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and also Doc, Doc, um, Coach Brown is, is doing, he's fighting something. He's, he's having a challenge with sweets. <laughs> he's having a challenge with cake. And he's, he said to me the other day, somebody came by and said, and he said, oh, you know, so he's working on that one there. That's a tough challenge. That is a tough challenge. So I love my cake, so I made sure I didn't want that challenge, you know, so I'm, I'm cool. So, yes. The, we, we've got now the four police officers have now been um, charged. I believe it's second degree murder for all of them. Um, the first one, who had his knee in the neck of George Floyd, he actually um, was third degree and was upgraded to second degree as well. Um, we had the memorial or the funeral, well, one, one leg up funeral yesterday with Al Sharpton. And we have seen the demonstrations over the period of time. But one of the things, <clears throat> David, I had wanted to say, because if we don't structure this discussion, we can go into all different facets of it. I had wanted to, and I'm, I was trying, I'm still trying to see if I can get an American friend online, if he can come, because he had some very colorful views, which he posted on, um, on Instagram. But reactions are coming in different ways. 
Some people are very angry. Some people are mad. Some people are saying, I want to mash up everywhere. And then some people are not that angry. What's your what's your take? And ladies and gentlemen, please also let me have your have your views. Um, but her coach Brown is there. He says, "I'm getting there and I'm winning." <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. Well, nice one, coach. Nice one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your take on what's happening now, David? Your overview. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of um, what's happening in the states and what's happening world, worldwide, really, we're seeing worldwide mm -hmm. protests. Is that I think in, in again in my lifetime, I've never seen a movement like this yeah. um, that's the first thing um and what i mean by that is it's 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 a it's a movement against the brutality um that has occurred historically unfortunately um in, in, for, for many a year in, in regards to police brutality against young young black men um essentially but yeah. obviously as part of that um the black community as a whole because it's not just men who are suffering with this. Mm. And I think in terms of the movement itself, it's um, it's really an interesting thing to see people um, coming together yeah. uh, and protesting um, uh, that this does not sit well yeah. with us as a community. Okay, we, we, we don't want it. We don't want those that, that, that protect and serve us to be... Um, responsible for these acts that that seem to, to to occur quite unfortunately regularly and i must say off the off the bat as well that um i don't think this speaks to the majority of police out there at all um i don't think that at all i don't think it's representative of what police stand for or believe in mm. uh, but i think that there are um bad apples and we need to get rid of these bad apples um yes. from out of the police force and and to and and and, and to, to prevent these um, events from occurring now in terms of the second part of your question there which was really related to the response of of people within these protests i think we mentioned and touched on um a, a grieving process in regards to um hearing you know, negative news poor news mm. and everybody is individual in that regard i said um and i still you know, firmly believe that everybody will have an individualistic response but really and truly i think that you um, when you look at things, if it is that you're part of a protest mm. and the protest is is something that you believe wholeheartedly in, then I, I don't believe that in terms of a, a positive way of approaching that is to is to condone any form of physical abuse or violence against um, um, other people in the protest or, or police or government institutes or, or otherwise, um, because I don't think that that holds um, any real value in the in the in the way that the protest is 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 trying to really take its its uh, its point or effect mm. the other secondary thing to say um is i'm of the opinion here that there are elements that will uh, attach themselves to a protest uh yeah. but not necessarily believe in the in the core value of that movement um, in order to um, to undertake uh, uh, a particular avenue of destruction or looting or stealing or abuse or violence, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Um, yes. and making use of that movement to undertake that particular uh, task, and I'm I'm under no false doubt that that is something that is uh, currently being undertaken. And unfortunately, what that does, Silborn, is it devalues the movement um, mm. and the objectives of the movement of, of those core individuals. Again, uh, what I'm saying here is that the I would say that the majority of people who are out there are trying to really register their disapproval of, yes. uh, of, 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 of persons within a protect and serve capacity um, yes. doing something to the community in a negative light. Um, I think that the bulk of people who are undertaking those protests are doing that with good intentions. Yes. But the, 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 the bad apples, again, it's, yes. it all boils down to these bad apples. I love apples, but the bad apples here are really causing the issue. Apples. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but the, the bad apples here are, are really causing the problem. And again, the focus is then lost. And, and that's what really 
sort of irks me to an extent. We then start focusing on the bad apples more so um, um, rather than how we attribute the the desire to root out these bad apples from respect to the, the police force and how we as a people would generally want the, the same um, um, way of of dealing with somebody in the in, in, in the police force that has yeah. done something such an such an atrocious act of of kneeling on somebody's neck mm. um not having any sense of realization there that, that what you're doing to, is, yeah, is, what is, is really causing grief and harm to another human being so that that's the that's the key that's how i feel about this whole um protest movement the intentions are good the yes. the the, the the, the persons attaching themselves to the movement um, may well not be doing it in the best interests. And even if they are in the best interests, I think they've got to have a really good, deep, introspective look at what it is that you're trying to achieve by being the aggressor. Um, uh, and, I, I, and I can't speak to that being as something of value. Um, but, the, but the thing here is we need to hear the voices of those um, in America um, yeah. how they feel about the historic treatment that they have yeah. had in the face of, of, of police there. Um, hey, you know, that, 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 that's a good know, point which you, which you made um, about understanding and, and you know, I, like, like, my, like yourself, I do not condone the violence and uh, I didn't like the demonstration and uh, damaging of few people's property. Um, but as they say, mortars and bricks can always be built back. You know, but lives you cannot bring back, okay. and and I believe my job personally is to somewhat try to feel it more. is is like wanting to feel what Americans are feeling. I know somebody said to me the other day, um, she was a bit peed off. She's in the states, of course, and she said that they called her up and few other BME in the in the organization and said, "Are you okay? Are you right? You know, you're right. You know," and um. Can we do anything? And and the person felt a bit patronizing. They, they felt somewhat like it was a bit um, patronizing. Yeah. So, uh, so it's like people, in a way, white people also, black people, is not knowing what to say. Not what, what to, should I say? Some should I put something on my timeline? Oh, if I don't put something, because people you know are, are actually saying, oh, I noticed nobody has said anything, and and they're watching people because they say. To be complicit, to be silent is complicit. And then I started to say, silence how? Silence because you don't see something on my Facebook or, or I don't yeah, put yeah. something out. Or companies, big companies are now putting statements out just for the sake of being political correct. Yeah, yeah. And, and, I, I think yeah, that's, yeah. that's and that's the, and that's the difference though, you know, Silborn. I think that, that this is why I say the movement for me has, um, when I say movement, I'm talking about the the the, the Black Lives Matter movement has uh, and and the and the uh, the event of an occurrence of of this magnitude has definitely changed the way that companies, people, um, you know, different sectors have responded um, in one voice. And part of that will be a change in society. And um, societies obviously change over time. And um, the acceptance of of of, of certain norms changes over time so that's the first thing um we're in a different position in life for 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 for, for the most part um but that change to me signifies that there may well glimmering of hope here there may well be a a change to the way that we um now really hone in on on on, on what is completely a, 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 a situation whereby we should not be finding ourselves in, in any time, but in 2020, we should not be finding ourselves having this particular discussion. Mm. Um, and yeah, I think that, that you know, there's, I think not everybody can be pleased, in, and this is my personal personal viewpoint here, not everybody can be pleased with the response of, 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 of others. Um, and to, to, to say that because there's no speak, it's, an, it's, a, it's a silent acceptance, I think it's really a, a harsh um, critique of somebody's response because not everybody wants to be vocal um yes. you know on, on on every particular issue is it that that to me um is 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 um is not the acceptable norm we can't all have an opinion on every single 
yeah. thing that happens in life. Um, if that if that were the case, we, we would ourselves be twenty four hour news entities, and we are yeah. not. So yeah. um, I, I don't I don't particularly like that that route of inquiry um, into looking on people's profiles or looking um, uh, uh, at people's statuses and saying, well, why aren't you talking about Black Lives Matter? Or why aren't you talking about this particular group? Because, you know, truth be told, I, I'm not I'm not trying to um, suppress this discussion, but I'm not interested in other elements of, of, of society um, that, that may well um, be headline news for yeah. a week or two. So um, I think we've got to be, um, um, You've got to use that a little bit of. Uh, I'm not saying common sense is not being utilised. I'm just saying that I think that um, we've got to really reflect on what it is that we want to push as a, 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 as a person, not we as an, a general group, but as a, as a person, and what you want to be involved in. Um, and and I think in in this regard, more people have wanted to be involved in 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 this because it it really has touched home. I mean, you know, it's not, whilst we talk about police um, um, on, on, on police brutality against against the common person, um, that, that this is a little bit different in that there were four police officers all yes. adopting um, a manner of, 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 of behavior that is not acceptable um, yeah. altogether. Um, and I think that that may well be a, a trigger as to why people have uh, responded in this particular manner because you know four police officers is 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 is, is tragic it, mm. it really it's tragic that 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 not one of them really gripped the situation and felt that this was something that was um going to end in the way that it tragically did um, I mean, like, like to turn around and just say guys 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 you know say something because yeah. Yeah. Because upon looking at the video, and anyone can look at the video, and the the way the onlookers and the, that very vocal gentleman was actually seeing what was happening, and said, "Can't you see? Can't you see? Can't you see?" So there's that moment where where actually some of the defense persons and the the prosecution, the question has been asked. So when did it move from the act to a premeditated action where there's this mens rea? to kill you know yeah. and and that is what they're looking at now because a police officer in the course of his duty is always in action you know what i mean there's always yeah. these and that's why they're saying it's going to be very difficult to actually get a murder charge with, with, with these things because now some of the all the commentators are out there now they one for the one supporting and some of them are saying it's difficult because all this noise are going on. Maybe he didn't know how much his knees on because he didn't hear those views. All of these things are coming out trying to say that, hey, let's not get our hopes up. And what I fear, what I fear, uh, where was I? I don't remember where I was with Rodney King. But what made that trigger for Rodney King wasn't the beating. The beating was the first part. It was the verdict. And, and, yeah. and that is going to be the dangerous bit. Because people are, yeah. the demonstration is still going on, but yeah. one of the things I question with Black Lives Matters is when they say no justice, no peace. But anyone can see the wheels of justice is moving now. So if the wheels of justice is moving, is it that the demonstration now is to continue to put pressure to say you have to convict him of murder, or is it bringing a light on the other cases? Because Aubrey. Is also in the picture as well. Yeah, yeah, the, that's the thing. So there are multiple cases that this is shining yeah. a light on. Brianna, uh, as well, who tragically lost her life in her yeah. own home um, through through tragic circumstances. Again, there are there are so there are just multiple circumstances, uh, multiple situations that we are, are either aware of or are learning uh, about. And yes, this is shining light on them and. And I think mm -hmm. for, for the most part, some cases seem to be reopening up. Yes. Uh, the questions being asked about the cases, about how um, um, decisions were made in those cases. And I think there has to be a, a, a sensible sort of approach to this in regards to George Floyd. And, and that is that um, we, we as a society, have, I think, should accept that there has to be a fair trial um, okay. from what we, we can all 
trial by um, sort of uh, social justice, but there has yes. to be a fair trial. Um, and I thought, I hope with a with a fair justice system, and I'm not saying that it, the justice system is fair, but we would all aspire to have a fair justice system that we get um, the 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 result, obviously that we see as as fit here. And and I think that's that's key because there's there's nothing that we have all seen that makes us feel that there's anything other than that the result of of this being um, uh, 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 an, uh, uh, an effect, in effect, mm. a, a police uh, combination of police who have committed an act that is 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 far uh, and above what should be expected by any protecting serving community. Yes, yes. Well, you know, we we, we could go on a lot regarding <laughs> this, and this is this is a topic which is going to go on. But I want to leave um, uh, persons with this very. Um, perspective and this perspective was yesterday when i was there preparing and doing my work i saw this news item which said that mr george floyd wanted to be a supreme court judge and i said i need to listen to this and the cnn person uh, presenter brought in his second grade teacher and the second grade teacher had this essay by george floyd said he wanted to be a uh, I posted it on my page. Anybody want to go on my page can actually see that. I, I, I took my phone and just, just take this quickly, you know. And what the teacher actually said, and they read the, they read the, I said, he said he wanted to be a, a judge. So when the guy who's a bad guy stand up and making noise, he said, sit down. And he hit the thing on the, the gavel. And then what he said is that, take him down. <laughs> but but it, it, it was from a child perspective. But the fact that he wanted to, be a part of a justice system was so very profound to me that I drew the conclusion that he, yes, fulfilled his ambition, but in a different way. And his life wasn't in vain because he's not breathing. I know we say we can't breathe, and that is the, 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 the political correct term, but he's not breathing through the whole justice system where everybody is actually being convicted to actually want to do a change. And that is why I was correct. Uh, uh, Al Sharpton was correct at the time. You've got to actually seize this moment. If you're not careful, David, yeah. we'll find ourselves in the same situation going over and over again, like a deja vu. Exactly. And I, I think if it is that he, um, again, without without signing um, coy with about this statement, if he has really breathed life into the justice system, if mm. he has been that effect of change to bring about um, positive effects. I'm not saying that his death is justified, but his yes, death would definitely not be in vain. Not be in vain. And I think that we, as human beings, deserve more um, from 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 this. We 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 should get that in an effect that 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 there is a change to the way that um, that that there's a disproportionate, uh, especially in America here, uh, mm. there's a disproportionate number of black persons who are in um, jails up and down the country. Yes. Um, and if there is a positive spin of, not spin, but a positive way that we can look at changing yes. the ju justice system via review because of what's happened. Um, I mean, that that is something that would honor this, this you call him sir, we could knight him. Um, yes. Uh, George Floyd. For, for for his impact in changing the uh, the, 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 the 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 judicial system, um, mm. but it, that that effort does take everybody. It yes. takes everybody to, to to make those changes. It takes um, communities to try and reinforce the need for justice. It takes politicians to accept that as a as a route of change. It takes yes. um, people to be employed from communities um, within those areas to be a reflection of the community, to, 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 to be spokespersons for those communities, to effectively change those things, those, those ideas as well. And that acceptance brings people together and it changes mm. things for the better. And that's all we would, would ask for um, yeah. in this regard, positivity. And that, yeah, and that is very crucial as well, that everyone owns the, the situation and everyone to be a part of the process at this time. As you know, someone messaged me yesterday and called me and actually said, Silver, I know you really want to change the USA and give me all these ideas, but listen, we got problems here yeah. <laughs> in the UK. 
he, yeah. he, he, he said we 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 got we got problems here in the UK, and yeah. uh, we need to sort that out as well because the racism and all those factors are here. So so it, it is going to be a, a broad brush covering everything, you know, because one of the things I keep saying all the while, and I tell you what is very interesting though, you know, I was posting these things about um, young. If there's a thousand, if there's a thousand um, demonstrators, let's get another thousand black men, thousand boys, to split that figure up and to shadow, com, um, chief of police, shadow commissioners, shadow um, city council people in the state, shadow congressmen, shadow congresswomen, shadow senators, and then yesterday, at the university where they had the funeral or the memorial service, the guy said we're going to have the Floyd, George Floyd Memorial Scholarship. Fantastic. To raise leaders. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And then I smiled to myself and said, bingo, that's it. And then George Floyd wanted to be a judge. And yeah. I mentioned shadowing judges, shadowing mayors, and all those persons getting there into the... Now, as you know, there's always this backtrack person say, yeah, but they need to deal with the heart and everything. I say, yeah, I know we need to deal with the heart, but we also need to get into the system at the same time, like a parallel action. Yeah. So, so I, I believe that there's a, there's a wind of change if we follow the process, and it applies also here in the UK. I did the Shadow MP scheme, where I shadowed Dominic Grieve, Peter Bottomley, and uh, Andrew Pellin through Operation Blackboard. People are shadowing judges, magistrates, shadowing. Um, you know, I think we need to start shadowing. Fritzy companies, these um, CEO and all those sort of things. And yeah. and why I say that, ladies and gentlemen, is because I believe it will burst a bug, burst something, sow a seed in someone, you know, and somewhat inspire them to say that, yes, I can, yes, we can, and I can do that, you know, and I, and I believe that there's a wind of change. So, yeah, so why my friend said, yes, Silver, and we, we're going to focus on the UK, I said, well, I think we need to focus on everywhere at the same time, collectively. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. And I think that, you know, um, there are schemes that exist currently um, on a local level that um, persons may not be aware of. And I think sharing of that information is is key, particularly in, 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 in as a reminder for that at, at moments like this. So mm. from my point of view as a doctor, um, and I have to give a shout out to the University of Sheffield where I did my training, they had the Sheffield uh, Outreach to Access and Medicine Scheme, which is called yeah. SOMES. And that really was effectively reaching out to, to, to communities that wouldn't consider medicine to be first and foremost on their agenda um, yes. and appeal to people who, who, who wouldn't uh, necessarily have the chance and opportunity. And it speaks to the point that you were raising there about trying to encourage people from communities that wouldn't really um, feel the desire or, um, or, or not desire so much, but the opportunity would exist for them um, um, historically. And the reach out, uh, you know, having an outreach project um, mm. is, is key. And having the support of the University of Sheffield is fantastic to, to sort of uh, encroach on that. And so that's what we need. We need um, people within the communities, the black communities, Asian communities, but we also need the support generally of, of, of universities, of, of, of businesses, to support these projects to 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 the to get them to fruition um and, David, and i'm I sure want, i want to put, put a point to you you remember when you said that you saw there might be some hiccup with your system over there with your connection yeah well apparently i just realized that you're being like a statue being just <laughs> <laughs> All we can hear is my voice. <laughs> I, well, what, what I would say is that I am in true Zen mode, um, and I am appealing to a higher power to deliver the message to the people. Um, yeah. And so, as long as that message is being presented through voice, you don't have to worry so much about uh, my position on the screen. Yes, um, yes. Uh, I, I am, a, I am a, a firm believer yeah, yeah. in reflection, um, yeah. and so I'm just reflecting whilst I talk to you here, I, but I am here. Yeah. I, I am really here. Generally, well, I'm well, here. <laughs> well, I, I tell you though, one of the things about podcasts, that's why I said you need to do this podcast because ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you the honest truth. Whenever I come off uh, of a discussion with someone live and then we sit down or we start to talk after, we said, 
oh my days, this is so powerful. We need to share this. So sometimes that maybe we got to do some good podcasting where we just have our pictures there and, and, and just talk. It's a live podcast, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it comes across um, very, very powerfully uh, uh, as well. But let me hear what Chris Brown, Chris Coach is saying here. Shadowing mentoring for those who would normally have this is a positive lifetime experience. And he's speaking from experience as that what he does. And uh, so the mentoring bit. So I will I will always, David, as you know, I'll always, always keep talking about the the shadowing and mentoring aspect and looking at the different solution. But over the next week or so, uh, I, I know I've got a guest from California as well. They just wrote a song about I Can't Breathe. But I don't want to play. They say I could play it, but next thing Facebook will, uh, YouTube would just shut me down because it's already on their YouTube channel. So they're coming on at some point soon, and I've got a few other guys in the states which I I want to really um, listen to them, listen to them as much as yeah. possible. Yeah. yeah. All right, David. Ah, where are you? You went. Um, I'm. I think I'm back now. <laughs> ah, you're back. Go. You did. You did a zen. <laughs> oh, you, you did I, a... Yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 oh, yeah. <laughs> Magic, uh, magic. Okay, okay, right. I think you went somewhere a while again, and you left. You left. You had a long mic, and while you, <laughs> it doesn't go that far. I promise. <laughs> All right. Well, well, ladies and gentlemen, listen, David. Ah, uh, sorry. One more thing. One more thing. Oh, yeah. Um, those who are coming on to this segment of the show, one of the things that the government has actually said is, um, in relation to any demonstration what they said is to really don't do it you know yeah so in groups of so mm. essentially what what um the minister for health um basically said today was um respecting the government advice respecting the two meter rule yes. um and and no more than a great a party of six um individuals and obviously with respect to a protest that mm. that, that can't that can't occur so um I think that's that's the advice from the government, and that's the advice that should be stuck to. But David, can someone say, "Okay, guys, six, 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 <laughs> six, 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 six. Let's follow. Six, 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 six. People can be witty <laughs> with it, you know, and I and I get that. And I said at the top that this is a really an ethical dilemma that people face. Um, yes. At any point in the time, if this was pre-COVID, nobody would be batting an eyelid in regards to protesting. Um, mm. But this is a is, is a slightly different time. Um, everybody has to make their own choice. But the advice here is from the government is to to respect the two meter rule and not be outside of parties of six. Fantastic. Okay. Well, listen, David. I want to thank you so much for your exposure and, of course, um, discussing the whole aspect with COVID, which, which is something that we have been keeping a, a view on. I, I've got lots of feedback all the while. Uh, people say they enjoy it because it, it's able to relate as much as possible not everybody's going to watch um number 10 or so they believe that number 100 where i live is much better in <laughs> it's, it's, it's numerically it's 10 times better isn't it, <laughs> it, it is. thank you so much no you you know, you, you, that's it <laughs> quick quick on yeah. the quick on the numbers there but, but can I, I have to tell you this joke for free though ladies and gentlemen there were three persons there was a a, a, a lawyer a pastor and an accountant and they say how much is five and five the pastor said five and five is ten till thy kingdom come you know you know praise god hallelujah they asked the accountant how much is five and five the accountant says well we've got depreciation and appreciation it could be anything nine or eight you know and then they asked the lawyer how much is five and five and he said how much you want it to be? <laughs> wow. <laughs> how much you want it to be? Well, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for, for today and have a good day. And thank you. And uh, thanks, um, Dr. Um, Burton as well, Mr. Burton. And remember to like and share the YouTube channel. I'm going to put it on Silver and TV. Remember, I'm watching you. Our eyes upon you. Just like people are watching the timelines, I'm also watching you. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, David. Listen, all right, take care. Coach Chris Brown, all the best as well. Thank you. Take okay, care. Thank you. Bye-bye.